Please be seated. Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Love is much more than an emotion. Love is a commitment. Love is a decision. A decision that we are called to make over and over and over in our lives. And today our Lord Jesus is, invite, is inviting us once again to make the decision to, to love. So turn with me to the, today's gospel according to Mark chapter 12. We're going to start in verse 28 where a scribe asked Jesus, which is the first of all the commandments? Now, this question is actually really important because in the time of Jesus, there were a total of 613 commandments of the Mosaic law. So this scholar of the law was basically asking Jesus, so which one of these 613 commandments is like the most important one? See, the scribes they then had lots of rules, but what they didn't have was a personal relationship with God. Now, Jesus answered this man's question by focusing beautifully on that which is most essential. And he, verse 29 to 30, he said, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Okay, let's stop right there. So Jesus actually responded by quoting today's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5. Our Jewish brothers and sisters call this famous verse the Shema. And Shema in Hebrew is a word that means listen because it begins with the word listen. And even today, the Jewish people will pray the Shema twice a day during their morning and evening prayer. And according to the Lord Jesus, this is the first and the most important of all the commandments. Because if a person does not love God, then he won't keep any of the other commandments. But if a person really truly does love God, then they are going to fulfill all of God's commandments. This is why our first obligation is to God is to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yet notice that Jesus adds something not found in the original text. Jesus adds the words, with all your mind. It's actually not found in the original text. What does it mean to love God with all your mind? Well, it means that we are to place all our thoughts, all our intellect, our understanding, our studies, even our academic degrees at the service of divine love. Jesus was speaking to a scholar of the law and basically saying to him, like, you can also love God through your scholarly work. For example, I have, you know, uh, one college bachelor's degree, computer science, and I have three master's degree, one in business, two in theology, and they mean nothing if I don't place my knowledge, my mind, at the service of, of love. This is what it means to love God with your, your mind. But then in verse 31, Jesus quotes the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. He Jesus had it all memorized. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, Jesus said. Okay, I have a question. So why did Jesus unite these two commandments? One from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 5, and another from Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 18. It's simple, because he was teaching us that they are inseparable. The only way to prove your love for God, ultimately, is also by loving your neighbor as yourself. Some people say, yes, I love God, I worship him, I just can't stand my neighbor. Well, no. Jesus connected the vertical love of God with the horizontal love of neighbor to make the cross. Why? Because the love of God and love of neighbor are inseparable, according to Jesus. These are the two main reasons why we exist as a church here in San Pedro. Our church exists to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, to love God with all your heart can be summarized in one word, to worship. We exist as a church to worship God. 
That's our highest calling. I define worship like this. Please repeat after me. Worship is an offering of love, an offering of love that is holy and pleasing to God. That is holy, holy and, and pleasing, pleasing to God. God. If that's what you do, offering him, you're worshiping. So when we come to Mass, we are offering Him our love in a way that is holy and pleasing to Him, and we actually fulfill our call to worship God at Mass. Now, to love our neighbor can also be summarized in one word, serve, to serve. So we exist to serve our neighbor. In other words, we also exist to demonstrate God's love through our service and to meet the needs of our neighbors. Love, therefore, is the most important mission in your life. In fact, could you remind the person next to you, love is the most important mission in your life. Could you just say that to them? Love is the most important mission in your life. And I mess up all the time on it. Now, there's millions of books and songs written about love. For example, James Taylor, you know, how sweet it is to be loved by you. The Beatles, all you need is love. Dun, da, 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 da. Sonny and Cher, they say our love won't pay the rent. And then it says, but I got you, babe. Right? Or, or my favorite, the rose. I say love, it is a flower. And you, it's only seed. The question is, what is love? I mean, what is love? Let me give you a simple definition. Please repeat after me. Love is, love is a sincere gift of myself. A sincere gift of myself for the good of another. For the good of another. That's it. Think about it. A sincere gift of yourself for the good of another. That's the most important mission in your life. To give the sincere gift of yourself first to God in worship, but then also to neighbor in service. Now, the New Testament has written, was written in Greek, and there's actually four Greek words that can be translated love in the, into the Engl in the English language. Let's review them quickly, okay? The first Greek word is, repeat after me, eros. Eros. So eros is a spousal love that rises from a physical sexual attraction. That's the love of husband and wife. Pope John Paul II called this the raw material of love. Now, the second Greek word is, repeat after me, sturge. Sturge. Sturge is a familial love. It's the natural affection within a family, like between parents, or like the, par the, the parents with the children. That's sturge love. Now, the third Greek word translated love is, repeat after me, filio. Filio. Filio is a love from a deep friendship. It's a deep emotional affection of, of a brother. It is called brotherly love. So brothers and sisters, that is filial. Parents with children, that is sturge, right? Now, the fourth Greek word is, please, please repeat after me, agape. Agape. Now, agape is like super higher, much higher. It's a divine love. It comes from God himself. It's God's love. Agape is a love that is empowered by God's grace. We can't really do it without God's grace. Agape love is an act of your will, not your emotions. Agape love is a decision that is beyond feelings, beyond convenience, even beyond self-interest. Agape love is sacrificial love. Stronger than any fight, stronger than any financial problem, stronger than any illness, stronger than any hardship or problem or storm in life, stronger even than death. Agape love is actually willing to die for the other. So agape love is sacrificial love, God's love. In today's gospel, which word do you think Jesus used? He said, Jesus used the word agape when he said, you shall agape the Lord your God and you shall agape your neighbor as yourself. Literally the only way to do this with God's grace. So today I want to teach you a very practical way how to love your neighbor as yourself, the vertical aspect, the, excuse me, the horizontal aspect of love. I'm a great fan of a book titled The Five Love Languages, written by Gary Chapman. And he proposes that there are five love languages. I agree with him. And every person has at least one primary language by which they feel most loved. 
please pay attention to see which is your primary love language. I'm going to ask you afterwards. Love language number one, words of affirmation. So words of affirmation is your love language if you feel most loved and valued when someone takes time to speak kind words to you or encouraging words to you. Could be as simple like, I'm proud of you. Thank you for all you do. I believe in you. These words like lift your spirit. They make you feel seen. They let you know that someone truly appreciates who you are. Just like, you know, it's like filling a love bucket. Your, your affirming words pour directly into your heart, filling you with joy and, and reassurance. For example, you look good in that suit or you look beautiful in that dress or I like that you are always punctual or congratulations on your grades. You are very smart or you did a great job on that project. All these are words of affirmation that tell you, I love you. Love language number two, quality time. Quality time is your love language if you feel most love when someone gives you their undivided attention. They turn off the cell phone, set aside distractions, and truly be present with you. Whether it's a quiet conversation, a shared activity like fishing or hiking, or just sitting together, this time spent means everything to you. Quality time is not sitting on the couch watching television because the television has your attention. Quality time is sitting together and being totally focused on each other. It's not about doing like anything, anything extravagant. It's about knowing that in those moments, you're a priority. When someone invests time to listen, to laugh, to be with you, it fills your heart and makes you feel loved and cherished and understood. So quality time says, I love you to you. Okay? Love language number three is, by the way, mine is quality time, okay? Love language number three is gifts. Gifts is your love language. If you feel most love when someone gives you like a thoughtful a tangible reminder, reminder of their care. It's not about the size or the cost of the gift, but the thought and effort behind the gift. Each gift, whether it's small or large, represents their love. And for you, it's like, it becomes like a cherished symbol of that person's affection. It's a, the visible symbol of love. They speak volumes, these gifts, letting you know that they truly see and value you. So these gifts fill your heart because they carry the message, I love you. Love language number four is acts of service. If acts of service is your primary love language, you will feel loved when someone helps you with the daily tasks, goes out of their way to make your life easier. It's in these little acts like cooking a meal, helping with chores, washing the dirty dishes, lending a hand when you're like overwhelmed, that you feel truly valued. These actions say, I hear, I'm here for you because I love you. Acts of service fill your heart because they reflect genuine care and thoughtfulness for you. For you, love is best shown through actions that demonstrate a willingness to serve and support you. So these acts of service make you feel like deeply appreciated, understood, and loved, okay? Love language number five, physical touch. So physical touch is your love language if you feel most loved through like a warm, affectionate gestures like a hug, a pat on the back, you know, snuggling, holding hands, for you, touch is a powerful expression of closeness and comfort. And these simple gestures say, look, I'm here for you in a way that words cannot. So physical touch fills your heart by grounding you in the warmth of another's presence, offering a sense of security in love. I remember during like COVID, like nobody hugged me for like two years. And when I got a hug, it's like, whoa, boy, man, that was good. <laughs> when someone reaches out with a gentle touch, it makes you feel seen, valued, connected, genuinely loved. Okay? So I just presented to you the five love languages. Each of you has one for certain. 
one of these is your top one. You might not have thought about it before. So the question is, which one is your primary love language? Take a guess. Take a guess, okay? Raise your hand if it's words of affirmation. Anybody here? Okay, that's my second one, okay? Raise your hand if it's quality time. Okay, good. Take a guess. Take a good guess. Raise your hand if it's receiving gifts. Okay, very good. Mr. Abel, I'll give you a gift next time. <laughs> Raise your hand if it's acts of service. Okay, wonderful. Final one. Raise your hand if it's physical touch. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. To truly love others, you need to speak their language, not, the, not just yours. You want to love your neighbor as yourself, you got to speak their love language. For example, imagine a father who wants to show his love to his teenage daughter. And he buys her gifts and gives her money to spend and the cell phone in. And he spoils her with lots and lots of stuff. But she still seems distant from, it, from the dad. And it like frustrates him a little bit. And he asks his daughter, what's wrong? And she says, dad, I just wish you'd spend more time with me. So what's her love language? Her love language is quality time, and he thought it was gifts. So for this teenage daughter, quality time is her love language, and all the gifts cannot replace dad's full attention. This is why it's so important. Or consider a husband whose love language is words of affirmation. And he, that husband longs to hear words that affirm him, that encourage him, that build him up, that show appreciation for all his hard work. And yet his wife expresses her love through acts of service. She cooks and cleans and takes care of the children and handles like countless tasks every day. And one evening, he's a little frustrated. And he finally says to his wife, I don't feel you, I don't feel loved by you. <gasps> She's shocked. She's like totally shocked. Are you kidding me? I'm taking care of the kids, cooking, cleaning, doing everything for you all day long. How can you say that? And, it, and you know, he replies, I know you do a lot, and I'm so grateful for everything you do, but I need to hear from you that I'm doing a good job, that you're proud of me, that you appreciate who I am. And the wife is, pauses, realizing that for him, her husband, hearing these words means like everything. So she says... I didn't know that that mattered so much to you. I thought I was showing you I love you by, you know, helping you in all these other things. So do you understand how we can sometimes completely miss each other's needs? We think we're loving them, but we're not loving them in the way they receive love. Even when you're trying the best to love the other person, you might totally miss it, and they're not feeling your love. So I first encourage you to discover your love language. How? The way I did it. I went on the internet and I searched for number five, lovelanguages.com and take the online love language quiz. Takes about 20 minutes. Please answer it honestly. And once you know your love language, share it with your family and teach them how to love you. Teach them how to love you. You want to love me? You know, invite me to lunch, invite me to dinner, go hiking with me, go biking with me, spend quality time with me, give me some words of affirmation every once in a while. You know, then, you know, then ask your family to take the quiz and then ask them to share the results with you and then speak the love language of every member of your family every day and literally your family will be transformed by love. It will be transformed by love. You see, the people in your life need to feel your love. They need their love bucket filled. Your spouse needs to feel your love. Your children need to feel your love. Your parents, your family need to literally feel your love. It's not enough to say, I said I loved you when I married you 30 years ago. That, you got to say it today, every day. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, let's do it. 
Let's do it. That's why I invite you to make with me five decisions to love better. If you wish, repeat after me. I will. I will. Speak words of affirmation. Speak words of affirmation. To those in my life. To those in my life. Second decision. I will. I will. Give quality time. Give quality time. To those who need it. To those who need it. Third decision. I will. I will. Give gifts. Give gifts. To show my appreciation. To show my appreciation. Fourth decision. I will. I will. Serve my neighbors in need. Serve my neighbors in need. Last one. I will. I will. Show love. Show love. Through appropriate physical touch. Through, through appropriate, appropriate physical, physical touch. touch. Amen. Amen. If you live these decisions, you will be loving your neighbor as you love yourself. And you know what? You'll be loving God also. And Jesus will say to you, you are not far from the kingdom of God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.